Quinfer Bray is a character that I have both loved and hated at one point in time. And regardless of how I felt about her, I always thought she was one of the most iconic antagonists and protagonists have ever graced my screen. I don't know if it's the allure that Diana brought to the character or the fact that Glee was just a really weird show in general, but I think we could all agree that most of us wanted way more of Quinn than we ever got. Even though her character was only a regular for like half of the run of the show, she was never able to be replaced despite all the attempts of the show to clone her. So if you're not new to this channel, you probably know how it goes. I analyze characters by looking at their growth, their relationships, their role in the story, their motives, and sometimes I'll go on a tangent depending on the character in question. So here it goes. But I expect the position will become permanent. Hi, Finn. RuPaul. What are you doing talking to her? When Quinn Fabray is introduced to us, we can clearly tell that she's supposed to be one of the antagonists on the show. In the first episode, she is shown as nothing more than a popular mean girl who hates Rachel Berry and who's dating the quarterback. By the second episode, we find out that this supposedly typical mean girl has talent and can sing. And by the fourth episode, her character gets her first main arc when we discover that she's pregnant and plot twist, the father of her baby is her boyfriend's best friend. So. Up until the end of season 1A, we are showed the darker side of Quinn, who is willing to take advantage of Finn due to his naivete and trick him into taking responsibility for her baby. Before the end of season 1A, she gets kicked out of her home and surprisingly, we don't get to see Quinn at her lowest yet. Then, when we get to the second part of the season, we see a softer side to her. She is more friendly with her peers in the Glee Club and eventually we see a very beautiful but very short-lived friendship with Mercedes. In the season finale, she gives birth to her baby and the next time we see her is in season 2, she's ready to get back everything she lost. Now, this is our first return to the cycle of Quinn Fabray. She sells Santana out and gets back on top. So in season 2A, I can't really say that Quinn really had as intense of a storyline compared to season 1. I mean, she's dating Sam and that was, you know, such a cute relationship. But later she cheated on him with Finn, got back together with him, ran for prom queen, lost, got dumped by Finn, got super mad about it, and I guess calmed down by getting a haircut. Then in season 3, we get back on our last ride of the Quinn for Bay roller coaster. She comes back from summer. She clearly, <laughs> that haircut didn't work because she dyes her hair and joins a group of girls called the Skanks. So Quinn is pretty much okay with this until Shelby comes back into town and Quinn decides that she'll do whatever it takes to get back Beth. But she doesn't really calm down until Shelby leaves McKinley. And after all that, honestly, we do see the better side of Quinn and unfortunately, she gets into an accident while texting and driving. Her survival makes her change her perspective on life. She gets into Yale, wins prom queen by one vote, and gives her crown to Rachel. So by the exit of the show, Quinn is shown to have matured and softened and now knows where in life she wants to go and she ends up going to Yale. So after season 3, Quinn popped back in and out for very few episodes every now and then. She would sometimes show a glimpse of her old ways, but it wouldn't last too long. And in season 6, I can honestly say that the old Quinn was nowhere to be found. She was a completely changed woman who seemed to have figured out exactly what she wanted in her life, and I think she really deserved it. I wanted to thank you guys, because without each and every one of you, this would have never happened. You supported me and loved me through all the drama. Quinn had one of the most interesting relationship dynamics with other characters on the show. Her and Finn's relationship seemed to be as much of a popularity and status transaction as it was about real feelings. I think the two of them really loved each other when they were in their popularity bubble, but I think that both of them knew deep down inside that the real love they felt was not with each other but with other people. Seeing them in season 4, you could tell that there were no hard feelings because I think both of them knew that everything felt big at the time but in the real world it was insignificant and that they were just never right for each other. Her and Sam were cute and so aesthetically pleasing together and even though they had a lot of chemistry, Sam would not have been able to handle her in the long run. Her relationship with Joe was so weird because it was like completely in the background but to be honest, I actually really loved it. Now with Puck, Quinn always seemed to be drawn back to him. I think Quinn never let herself fully accept her love for Puck because of what 
that would mean about herself. With Finn, she imagined a perfect life that she never believed Puck could provide for her. But in the end, their bond came through the Glee Club and it ultimately brought them back together. And even if they maybe are not together today, I think they very well may be one of those people who always find their way back to each other. And on the friendship side, when I watched the pilot, I would have never guessed that Quinn would ever like Rachel Berry, let alone be one of her bridesmaids. And I think they had a beautiful friendship and I'm glad that they didn't ruin it. Now, the biggest waste that I've ever seen in my entire life is what they did with Mercedes and Quinn. After Mercedes took her in and witnessed her giving birth, they should have had a lifelong bond, but the writers just threw it in the trash. She formed an unholy trinity with Santana and Brittany, and I barely ever saw her interact with Brittany in any significant way. Now with Santana, they had an insane relationship full of support, jealousy, and yes, even hooking up. I will never get over Quinn being absent for the tribute episode and the Britanna and Clayne wedding episode. I would have gladly traded the 100th episode appearance to see her come back for those two special episodes. In the end, it was beautiful to see how blended Quinn had become with the rest of the members of the club and how much love she ended up having for the people that she once considered losers. Mr. Shu in there? Because I think I'm going to tell him that Rachel and Kurt keep sneaking off. You can't do that. He'll have to suspend them. And then there goes our chances at nationals. Darn. So Ryan Murphy, the creator of Glee, was pretty vocal about what he wanted Quinn to be and how Diana ruined it for him. He wanted Quinn to be a villain, plain and simple, and blamed Diana for making Quinn human and giving her likable qualities, even though, to be fair, she put up with every rubbish storyline they gave her. So I'm not sure how it's her fault that the fandom still found a way to love her but regardless of that at the start of the show quinn's role is to serve as the sub villain along with santana with the main villains being sue and terry early on we're supposed to see her as the blockage for our star-crossed lovers she's a teenage show's version of an ursula who has trapped finn into staying with her while rachel could be seen as the ariel of the story she's also an attempt to satirically tackle the hypocrisy of certain people in religious groups i.e quinn being the president of the celibacy club while having extramarital sex in the background i don't even think they got Quinn pregnant to give a lesson about contraception and pregnancy. I think they only added the storyline to show how horrible Quinn could be. Quinn throughout the show shows us that she can be an HBIC when she feels like it and I love that side of her. To me, she is the embodiment of longing for something so bad that it ruins you even though the very thing that you're looking for is furthest from the answer to your problems. Her obsession with being prom queen shows you where her state of mind is at and at the surface she may just look like another shallow girl who wants more praise just for the sake of it but Quinn is a character who has planned her life. She has planned her entire future on how she needs it to go. Quinn shows us what it's like to put on a facade and what it's like constantly trying to be where you're not. She's what happens when you have the pressure of your parents to be a certain way while also being stuck in a society that conditions you to need to look and act a certain way even though deep down inside, you may be a completely different person but can't show it at the risk of losing it all. Quinn's character goes through so much from being a villain to becoming one of the most human characters on the show. She represents some of the best growth that I've seen on the show. This is the one chance that we have to actually feel good about ourselves. Are we supposed to be the popular girls? <laughs> so why can't we have our dreams come true? Many people have complained about how erratic Quinn's behavior is throughout the show and like I said earlier, we all know that the writers are trying to fuck her up but it didn't work. You see, the Glee writers have thrown in so many insane storylines that it's hard to keep track. Some of them manage to entirely ruin a character while a handful of them surprisingly delivered an overturn for certain characters. In the Born This Way episode, which by the way is one of the best Glee episodes in my opinion. Everything with Gwyn sets into place. All of her past and future behaviors would be explained with just five minutes of backstory. In Born This Way, we found out that Quinn was formerly known as Lucy Q for Bray. She was an overweight kid who would get bullied for her looks and had an awful nickname. When her father got a promotion and a raise, this was finally her chance to change her life and she took the opportunity to do so. She started doing sports, got a nose job, and asked to not be called by her name Lucy, instead opting for her middle name Quinn, thus shedding the person she once was. One of the first things I want to talk about is 
Quinn versus Rachel. I always wondered why Quinn initially hated Rachel so much. I mean, from what Glee showed us, she was mostly cruel to Rachel and not really the other members in the club. The obvious reason to this should be Finn, but Glee revealed that Finn and Rachel only met in the Glee Club sophomore year, but we see Quinn bullying and trolling Rachel online before any interaction with Finn is seen. Then it got me thinking about how Rachel represented everything Quinn once was and hated about herself, except Rachel owned it. It mirrored the situation with Karofsky's disdain for Kurt. These characters feel rage and envy seeing someone owning what they are hiding inside themselves. In the Born This Way episode, you could see how happy Quinn is when Rachel wants to model her nose for a nose job. Personally, I would find it creepy if someone wanted my nose but nope quinn is ecstatic and later you could see the hurt in her eyes when finn begged rachel not to do it and called her beautiful and this ties into why i think quinn went off the rails in season three so by season two quinn had finally got back everything she lost initially except for finn and when they got back together it triggered her back into the obsession of needing everything to be perfect i.e winning prom court together and etc in the later episodes not only does she lose prom queen but finn leaves her for rachel again you see, it was easier to accept that Finn left her because she lied and cheated on him than the simple fact that he just couldn't stay away from Rachel. The fact that she couldn't keep the guy that was the embodiment of what she had been longing for was too much for her. Finn isn't just some random guy she happened to fall in love with. Finn was the most popular guy in school and for a formerly bullied girl, being eyed by the most popular guy in the school is all the validation that you need to believe that you're good now. Unfortunately, Unfortunately for Quinn, Finn loved Rachel in spite of her flaws and I think that the moment Quinn realized that nothing she would do would ever be enough, she lost it. And when Shelby came back to town, Quinn decided to cling to the new life because she lost hope on reaching the status she once had. Beth is perfect. She's my perfect thing. Something even I can't screw up her new obsession becomes beth because to her it's the next best thing you know after shelby moves you could finally see her healing but it's only after she gets into an accident that you see her putting things into perspective now in the later episodes we see that she uses her wheelchair for sympathy and her old manipulative ways are back but in the end she wins and she realizes that it feels like nothing and instead gives the crown to rachel which i thought was a beautiful way to end the rachel versus quinn story now here's the deal. Quinn Fabre is a troubled girl. See, this is what happens when you fix the outside but the inside is still rotten. Quinn had so much rage that I would often wonder how she managed to keep her cool so often. What Quinn's character needed more than anything was therapy. She never ever healed the proper way and you could see hints of that. For example, when he found out that she was sleeping with her married professor or when she lied about her past to that douchebag boyfriend of hers no amount of praise would have been enough because i don't think she ever learned to love herself she depended way too much on the external validation but how can compliments and praise heal you when deep down inside you don't even believe them you know i think a pivotal point for quinn was accepting that she was in love with puck she admitted that he was the first guy to never ask her to change in any way and I think it was important for Quinn to know that she could be loved without altering herself or putting up a facade. I still think that Quinn needed to go to therapy more than anything else but notice how after she got together with Puck in season 5, we never saw her do anything insane again. In my opinion, Glee delivered its best characters when they were not planned or when they ended up taking completely different directions from what was planned. You know, Quinn is an amazing character that, despite being intended as a one-dimensional hottie, went on to be one of the most complex and well-layered characters on the show. I, I wish we had gotten more of her, but I am at least somewhat satisfied with where her character was left off. You know, we also have to thank Diana for giving us such a spectacular delivery for Quinn for Bray because Glee would not have been the same without her. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. Like usual, don't hesitate to leave your thoughts down below and I will see you next time. Bye!